All right, now how to make a dongo. First off, your material. Your material is this. It's fleece. Nice and soft. You use the blankets. You can find it at any fabric store. And pan the camera now. As you can see, this is the pattern for it. And I made four of the four pieces. Yes, it will stick together, and that's pretty much good. Also, you want to try to find fabric that matches as best as possible, or you can just use white for the light color or and black for the really dark colors. But if, if possible, try to match the thread as possible. So after you have threaded your needle and knotted it at the end, for, t for, starter, for starting sewers, you want to make sure you tie a knot at the end. Two to three times at the end is very much what you need. And pull your thread as far as you can like I have it. See how the front of my the front of my so thread is all the way at the, almost toward the bottom. As you go along with sewing, you need to pull this you need to pull it further down so the very front part of it that doesn't have a knot keeps moving up. This is how you keep using more thread and you keep it. And so no, no double thread. Okay, how to start. First off, you make sure that all your pieces are pretty much even Steven matched. And so you line it up as best as you can. Sometimes you just gotta flip them around. And as soon as you line it up, you pick a side. It doesn't matter which side. <coughs> you pick it as best as you can evenly pull it through both pieces and you pull until your knot's in. Then you're going to do an overhand stitch. So you're just kind of doing this repeatedly. Make sure it goes over the top and not to the side, otherwise you will not get it pulled in completely and not have your dongo bead that's supposed to work. Close up. And not far from that hole that you just did, like about a centimeter or two, make it poke through. And so, sometimes you gotta tilt it, other times you don't, but it just gets very picky. And be very careful with your thread. It's a big pain if you have a knot in your um, thread and trying to undo it will can take a while, which will end into cutting it and then ending it, ending your line of thread. So you just keep going until you reach the very end, and we will come back as soon as I get toward my the end of the line. Okay, this is what it should look like after you're done stitching. So before, but now I'm going to show you how to close off, close it off. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to do the overhand stitch like you always did when it's leading up to here. But instead, when you're pulling your needle through and you're fixing your thread, don't pull it all the way through. In fact, put your needle through the thread like so and pull, pull tight. Whoa, now it's dangling. <laughs> Okay, now exactly right by the spot you did it, and I mean like right by it or like right really close to it, because you can't put a huge space between it, otherwise it will never close. You pull it through again. You pull it through the thread one more time. After you find your needle, <laughs> you pull, pull it tight. And it should be turned into like this. Now you've kind of got one of your sides for your dongos. Now you should test it, see if it's going to come apart. And I'm pulling pretty hard, and it's not coming undone. So once that's done, you cut off the thread. I still leave quite a bit in here, but this is because... This is because this is the ins out inside of your dongo that you're sewing. This will be the aftermath. You're going to turn it inside out once you're done sewing everything in. So now we've got our basic part. 
Now, many other people have done videos and like this, and they always start saying, okay, I sew my face on next. I don't. I actually glued my pieces of my face on because sewing it, it just takes forever and eternity. And it's just easier if you do it this way. And if you find fast glue that heals it, that puts it on, that's and dry. and fast, that's fast dry, and also your best choice is that it goes clear. When you glue it, and once it's dry, the glue turns from white to a clear color, so you can hardly ever see it. So now, also, key reminder what I do is, see all this extra thread I've got? Yeah, I sometimes misjudge my thread length. So, in order to do, I'm saving this for later, because this will actually come in handy toward your final part of finishing the dongo. Now, your next choice is, obviously, picking getting your next thread ready, which I will set that up, and then you what you're going to do is, uh, first off though, big major, major do, is you make sure you're back inside out. You're not like this. You're back like this. Because, yes, you want to see your stitching that you just did. Otherwise, you're going to sew the, your next piece wrong, and it's going to be a, a very confused looking dongo. You're going to have stitches inside, and you're going to have stitches outside. So, you, you, yeah, it's going to have a battle scar, like my sister said. <laughs> battle scar! Whoa. Okay, so you take your next, your third piece, pick either side, it doesn't matter which way you want to go. Um, then try to line it up as best as you can. Have it sit inside, like so. Have it sit inside. Line it up as best as you can. Sometimes you just gotta flip it around. And you do the exact same thing that you did here, but sew it right here. And major factor, my friend Paul did this a couple of times. Make sure you're going through both pieces and not just one. Otherwise, what's the point of sewing it together if you're going to only sew through one second piece of fabric? So once I get my needle threaded, I will show you how I started off again. Jeez, Paul. <laughs> okay. And like I said, it doesn't matter which side. I mostly start down here because that's where I started my first knot. Okay, like I said, make sure it's all lined up. I'm going to sew through both pieces, not just one. Like Paul. Okay, I already skipped ahead of you guys. Sorry, but I've added all four pieces together. But we're now to this part. And there's a giant mouth. Nom nom nom. <laughs> but now we have to close it off. How do we do that? Well, first off, we can't close it off completely. Why is that? <laughs> because how the heck are you going to stuff it with stuffing? God, I'm retarded. Okay, well, remember that extra thread I told you to save? You threw it away, you're kind of wasted and a jerk. No to offense. nature. No offense, but yeah, leave your, have your extra thread that you used, if you have a long enough, thread it up, and then start off like, you're, like you did every time, but when you go, you're going to have to stop right about halfway. You know, I wouldn't say halfway because that would be a small hole. Because what you're going to do is, once you sew this side and this side with your extra thread that you had left behind, and like sew it like a quarter. Yeah, about a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch. You big enough to fit your lips in there? Yeah, like that. Kissy. About, about like this form, because you're going to have to turn your dongo inside out and then stuff it. Otherwise, you're going to have this bump, and you're like, what the heck is this? contraption. What are you trying to give me as a gift? So, yeah. So, what you're going to do is you're going to sew about a quarter of the way through like what you did when you put combined your dongos together, pieces together. And also, make sure you pull pretty tight. And I mean real tight for some of these. Also, especially when you're closing it off, make sure you do it good and tight and you are exactly on it. Otherwise, the thread will come undone and you will have a big ga gap start to open and your dongo is going to start spitting out filling. Here. It should pretty much take up almost all of this thread, possibly. But 
sometimes you just got to market yourself. And if you can't market with your finger, then I recommend this handy dandy little tool. It's a two in one mark pen. The blue side is a mark beacon. It gets rid of any marks for you. This one is in this disappearing ink. You can use Ooh. it. Ah. You use it to like trace anything, like to make the eyes or those blush circles for their faces, or anything else that you want to use to help you cut out fabric in case you don't know how to cut symmetrically. And over time, it will be it will turn out purple, but then over time it will disappear. We're gonna use that for their face, making their faces and their features. Okay, my hole is kind of smaller than I wanted it to be, but oh well. That's what happens when you judge, but. It's not that bad. As long as you sewed it pretty, gosh darn tight, you're pretty good. So, start turning your dongo inside out. As long as you sew the ends really tight and you're like right on top of each other with your, when you're closing it off, you should be fine and not have much of any rips. You can shake it and pull it and twist it any way you can. And then, ta-da! Look! So many gonna come like one. But it doesn't have its shape. It doesn't have its little round stick. Little round also, use use a stick like this. Like you could use a chopstick or the a knitting needle, but like more of the end side of a knitting needle, not the tip of it for a knitting needle. But this is just a normal stick that my mother uses when she's doing sewing and making stuff like this. It's to help. Give your give shape to the cl clothing or the article that you're making. So this is what's going to happen with the dongo. You kind of pop it up in case you can't put your fingers in and reach and pop it open as you're supposed to. So, yeah. But now we're about to feed our dongo some stuffing. And like I've mentioned before, I use polyester fiber fill. That's pretty much what it is. And it's going to... It's going to take a lot of this, so you stuff it as big and fat as you can. Just feed the darn tongue. So start off easy, you just stick as much as you can until you think it's full, and then just form it with your hands. I'm trying to be very careful, though, too, because I don't... I double checked with my sewing and it's like, okay, it's holding. Should hold. Just stick it in. Just keep sticking. And just don't be afraid to overstuff it. You can always take it out. Just make sure you're putting in enough. Because if you understuff it, it's going to not poof up as it would normally would. And not be that cute, plushy dongo you want it to be. Not really. So you take this and start poking it to give it the round edges. And make sure you get everything you go Sometimes you got to reposition your stick because it won't get through the fiber. He's all stuffed up. I can't stuff him anymore without him overflowing. So how to close off your dongo? Many, my mom th thought at first it's supposed to be like a drawstring bag clothes style, but when we tried it, it still had a huge hole in it. Then stuff him was starting to fall out. So, here's how you do it. You go through one piece of fabric at the beginning. You obviously, you go from the inside first. So that way the knot that you have is hidden, is sewn inside, so you won't see it when it's, when we're done with the finished product. Now, you're going to do a zigzag motion through the dongo but you go through one fabric at a time. So you go like this. 
first time ever poked myself in this. Thing. Wow. You pull, and then you just duck back inside. You go inside and out and do a zigzag motion. That's how it keeps the dongle closed. You can not see the stitching when you go through. And it will keep it closed. Kind of make it tight because you want it tight. You want this dongle to close and you don't want any filling to fall out. Because if you do, then you're going to have an unfinished dongle and it's going to kind of leave a mess like I mentioned before. So don't go through two layers of fabric, just one. Try to make it close to the first one as possible. So it's going to take a while. Yes, it takes just takes patience. Just like how you were sewing your dongle pieces together, except you now have to go through, pull through one side of fabric at a time. Okay. All right, I'm at the end, so I'm doing the closing off stitch like I've always done. Do it once. You go through both pieces of fabric. It doesn't matter. You're going to see the stitch. It's just so small that unless you had a microscopic eye, then you would see it. You do it right on it because this is your crucial piece right here. So I can make sure it doesn't come undone. Because if it does, your dongle is going to start unraveling and it's going to be another sew fixture that you got to deal with. I'm going to do it a third time just for double measure. That's what I do for safety measures. Safety first. not comes apart. It's a giant wrecking ball. Yeah. <laughs> so now I de-thread and I, in this case, it's once it's good and tight, you trim it all the way. Now, throwing away. Now you just squish it, make, squeeze it, double check, make sure you've got nothing else going on. I and did. you've got just a couple of times it needs to just be squished down. Give it some ra its round shape. You might wanna. Yeah, puff it. Peek it. Oh, there we go. Just make sure you don't pull on it that much and just bounce it a little bit. Okay, there. Okay. Now, we've got your dongo. Whee! Just takes a lot of reshaping and holding it and squishing it. That's all you gotta do to give it its shape.